Hi there. Let's take a look at the new Sienna NDI Cloud module, which is included with the Sienna ND Processing Engine Advanced. What we've got to here are two Sienna ND Processing Engines. These are freshly installed. One is Amazon Web Services in North Virginia, and we're calling that uh, NDIP6. And here's another one. This is in Google Cloud Platform in London. We're calling it NDIP8. So here we go. Here's the AWS machine that's running. And here's the Google Cloud machine that's running. And what we're going to do is we're going to bridge the two systems together using Sienna NDI Cloud so that all of the NDI streams in London are visible to the USA and the USA systems are visible in the London system. And here's how we're going to do it. So we have the new Cloud Gateway module that's now bundled in with the Processing Engine Advanced. We can do the same thing both sides. And the Cloud Gateway allows you to do a many-to-many bridging between systems. In this case, we've got two, but you could have as many as you want and all of them could be bridged like a virtual network, global network. Um, and what we need to do is configure these systems so they talk to each other. Um, so let's connect the two systems together and we do that using the NDI Cloud web portal. We can get to that by clicking on global configuration or heading to ndi.cloud. And this system uses a nodes and groups mechanism. It's a little bit like users and groups on a network. So we're going to create two nodes and put those two nodes into a same group. So let's start here with nodes. We need to make a node for the first one, which is NDIP6 in the USA. And all we need to do is find out what its public IP address is. We've got right here. Okay, we use the default settings. So that's NDIP6. We'll save that one. Then we're going to do the same thing for NDIP8 for London. Okay, again, we need the public IP address for London. Save that one. And then we create a group to connect them together. So we're going to call this group Transatlantic. It's going to be a private group, and we're going to make minimum latency. When we click on that group at the bottom here, we can add those nodes to that group. So we're going to add NDIP6 and NDIP8. And if we wanted to, we could add, add any of our other nodes. So for example, I've got Delabuntu is right next to me on the floor here. Uh, we've got MacBook Pros in another office, and then we've got other systems around the world that we can connect. So just to connect up a really big network of different systems, you can just put them in the same group and then hit the checkbox. What we need to do now we've created the concept of our software defined virtual network in, in our cloud portal is we need to actually identify these machines as being NDIP6 and NDIP8. And that's very simple. We go to the nodes, we click on P6, copy the identity, and we basically assign that identity to this machine here. Go to preferences, see it doesn't who it is, we're going to give it an identity which we've copied from the cloud portal. That's it, that's all we have to do. And then we'll restart that node. I'll do the same thing for the one in London. Copy the identity, and then assign the identity to that machine. Okay, then we just need to restart both systems. And what will happen is they'll be able to contact one another and start talking. And we can confirm that if we look at the, um, the GUI, we can look at the partner node status. Now, they probably haven't quite established communications yet. So we can see there's basically one way communication going on. But if we give this a few seconds, it'll complete the communications and the two systems will start exchanging NDI sources. And there we have it. We just had to wait a few seconds and they've now started communicating. So. What we've basically got is an active communication between these two systems and they're sharing all of their NDI sources with the other side and effectively localizing the availability of those sources. So let's test the connectivity now. I'm going to create a signal generator in each side and make sure that the other side can see it. So there's our one in USA. Let's put one in London and let's give them different patterns. So this one can be a bounce pattern. This one can be a pan pattern and we'll give them a destination so they're published with a proper name. So we're going to call this one USA SG, turn it on, and we'll call this one London SG. Okay. 
All right, turn these on. Okay, if we look at them locally, so this is the signal generator in the US. Yep, we've got a bounce, and in London, we should have a pan. There we go. All right, so now let's see whether they can actually connect to one another across the network. And again, this is, you know, 6,000 miles away across the North Atlantic. We grab an NDI source and put it into the US. Question is, can we see the signal? Learn SG. Click on search here, and here you can see it. R plus means it's been relayed. So this shows us that it's a remote connection, but it's LUN SG just as we asked for. And in London, let's see if we can see the USA signal generator. There we go, USA SG right there, okay? And just check that. So remember this one, this side is a, a bounce, and this one should be a pan, but a pan coming across the Atlantic. And there it is. Okay, let's grab ourselves a multi-viewer and we'll put the two together. So we'll take the USA source and we'll take the London source. And we'll give it a chance to warm up. And now let's have a look at the multi-viewer. So there we go. We've got the two sources together. USA on the left, London on the right. And the London signal is actually natively available in the US, even though the source of the signal is in London. And if you want to look at the latency, let's have a quick look what happens when we change the pattern. So this is the London signal being viewed in the US. And let's change the pattern from a pan to a bounce. So I'll go three, two, one, change. There it is. You can see the latency is super low. If I change it back to a pan, three, two, one, change. So it's a super low latency connection, very, very easy to set up, and it's seamless the availability. So if we had 50 streams available in the US, all 50 streams would also be accessible in London. Now they're not all streaming constantly. It's an on-demand based system. So we're not streaming all of our data from, from all sides continuously. What we're doing is we're making the streams available on demand so that they appear in the list of sources to select. And this allows you to seamlessly bridge infrastructure between cloud and cloud, even across long distances, between the cloud and the ground, between let's say the cloud and a sat truck. And again, it doesn't need to be two systems. It can be as many as you want, many to many. So if you had 10 NDO cloud systems all around the world, they could all be exchanging data with all of the others. It's not a one to many like some other systems that are available. This is a many to many. It uses a professional cloud portal so that you can dynamically alter your global network picture by taking nodes in and out, making connections between nodes. And overall, it gives you a super low latency. Most importantly, super reliable and mature. This is a mature product. The NDI Cloud was originally shipped in 2016. So it's had a lot of time to make sure that it's absolutely solid for broadcast production. And it's fully scalable. You can really scale out to as many nodes as you want. And because it doesn't use GPU, it really comes down to the availability of CPU power. So I'm using fairly small um, nodes here in, in, in AWS and GCP. But for example, we can go up to, I think, 224 vCPUs in GCP and again, a similar number in Amazon Web Services. So you can truly, truly scale this into a massive interchange of NDI, even across very large distances, such as across the Atlantic. If you have any questions, head over to sienna.tv slash NDI. Thanks for watching.